Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. I am Maglo Pillay and today's subject for discussion is the body of light. This is a curious topic and to this end we will ask our speaker, Sister Denise, to share her insight and wisdom into the subject. Sister Denise has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over 40 years. In the series, we look at things like the core of spirituality. Is there a balance between your inner and outer world? And what does your relationship to God mean to you? Do you have any relationship with him at all? Or is he just a name or concept in your life? Thank you for joining us. And Sister Denise, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank a you. very warm welcome to today's show. Body of light. What on earth does that mean? Well, it's not really an on-earth thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what above and beyond earth does it mean? You know, a What in heaven does it mean? <laughs> not even in heaven. Not even? No, not? Yeah. Okay. Do tell. Uh, the human being is composed of three distinct things. One of them is the point of light that is the soul. The other is the physical body. And then in between, you have the body of light. And a lot of people are not aware about that. Wait, Sometimes... Okay, sorry, that's quite a, a, a loaded uh, sentence. Say those three things again. Well, there's the soul, which is the self, the point of light, which is eternal, immortal, and um, passes through time, reincarnates and all this. And then you have your physical body, which you can see, you, you get it when you're in utero, and then you get born, and it's small, and it grows to the adult size, persists, and then you get old, it kind of gets smaller, and you die when it is no longer usable. And then when you die, you leave your physical body, but your body of light goes with you. Uh, the body of light um, looks the same as the physical body in its best condition. And so your body of light of a very old, old person wouldn't be looking like a very old, old person. It would be looking like you in your best period of time. And your body of light is also called sometimes the subtle body. And the subtle body carries with it uh, the mind, the sanskaras, the karma, all these things. And when you reincarnate, you still keep your subtle body of the previous birth for some time. And then it gradually fades as a new one for your current birth emerges. And this is one of the reasons why people who are very young uh, sometimes will remember their previous birth. Uh, but by the age of about four, that'll all fade away and they will be present for the current birth. So there's a kind of a transition period that happens for people. Mrs. Denise, how does your understanding of body of light impact on your spiritual journey? There is a practice in meditation where you want to actually work on your karma, which means you're also working on your body of light. Um, because your subtle body, in a way, contains the signs of all your karmic debts. And um, when you meditate, you're actually impacting your body of light. And this then has an impact on your physical body or the condition of your physical body. Because the body of light influences the physical body and the physical body influences the body of light. But your meditation definitely influences your body of light now. One of the things that you do in uh, spiritual practice is that you try to move beyond the limitations of the physical body. And so you work with your body of light in that process, you see, because the aim 
of a spiritual practice um, in maybe a more advanced level you can say is that you want to reach a state of absolute balance purity that you have perfected all the different parts of yourself which means you're really working on that body of light to make it uh, what we also call the angelic body and when you learn to work with your mind in a certain way you can actually project the um, yourself with your angelic body and you can actually do work, do service, very, very subtle service uh, through that um, instrument, through that mechanism to benefit people or to create an atmosphere in places where you couldn't easily go with your physical body. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, one's relationship with God, how does that impact? Does uh, God's energy, looking at uh, the soul and the body of light, change the color of the light in any way? And by color, I'm using it in the broad sense of the word. You know, some people do have special gifts like clairvoyance and then they can see that or the aura and things like this, they can see it. And um, people with those capacities, when they come in contact with us, they will very often speak about what they see. And that is interesting because, I mean, most of us don't really develop abilities of seeing auras and this sort of thing. But at the same time, we are working on this body of light uh, to make it very powerful and to also make it an instrument because um, it's rather like your, the presence of yourself. Now you can, suppose you have to do something that is, um, you know, very difficult, very demanding, very complicated, requires a lot of attention and so on. And you want to be successful in your endeavors. One of the things you can do is to really think about it and create the success of what you want to do in your mind and fill that into your angelic body, your subtle body, and project that to that time and place so that you create the atmosphere of that being already done and then when you go there it's as if most of your work is done by the time you've got there it's quite a subtle thing mm. but it works very well mm. is it an ease you know for someone who is realistic and practical and all of those things is what you just said, does it not sound too airy fairy, um, too, too subtle thing? Is it real? Uh, okay, the, in, in that context, this is my question. Mm, what you just said, um, I can see that it's real for you, but how real can it be for anyone else? Because it's way up there and most people are not you may um, be in a situation where you have a meeting that you have to go to, which you know is going to be very stressful, very difficult, uh, that it could be very emotionally uh, tumultuous, and so you may be afraid and wonder, I mean, how do I prepare myself to go to this meeting? This is something that happens to a lot of people. And this is really an example of where you can prepare yourself through your body of light and, you know, in advance of the event, you can go to where that's going to happen. You can create the vision of what you want to happen. You can um, have thoughts uh, towards the other people who are part of that meeting so that they um, feel the, um, the intention that you have, uh, that they um, are 
kind of predisposed to, um, you know, performing that scene in the drama the way that you are setting it up because you want everything to go well. You don't just go in there, you know, with fear and without having any control over the situation. It, it really gives you that edge of um, being able to, you can say, direct what's going to happen. And so that's going to make a huge difference, you know, or you go for an interview for a job or things like this, which people find very, very stressful. And they have no idea that you can actually prepare everything and, and transport yourself there and present yourself to the uh, people in question in advance through that subtle body so that they are um, so they're comfortable with you. you. You've set it up, as it were, in advance. And, and that's a very great thing to do, to really help you with your stress levels and things. Mm. What happens to an individual and one's body of light when in your physical body you have an illness and a serious one? I and how do you heal from it, uh, from that perspective? Um, when you have a, a serious illness, of course, you need to do whatever medical procedures are recommended and are suitable. But you also have to operate on the body of light because that makes a huge difference to the healing. So whenever you meditate, it's going to impact your body of light. Uh, there may be damage to your physical body uh, but when you really work with your body of light, with healing thoughts and so on, the energy that you put into your body of light will also be a factor to cause the physical body to come into harmony and to line up. And uh, that is a very good additional process to use uh, when you're dealing with a very severe illness. Yeah. Mm. Now, Sister Denise, um, throughout your life, uh, are you looking at your body of light to see what condition it is in? Do you, do you, do you try to change it in any way? Um, do you, uh, you become aware of it to know which part of yourself you have to work on? Uh, and yeah, how, does, how do you work with it on a practical day-to-day -day level? We become very aware we, there is the physical body, the body of light, the soul. We practice to be soul conscious. And part of the practice of soul consciousness is that you're really operating almost more through the body of light than you are through the physical body. So you shift your consciousness more and more to the soul and body of light. and. Uh, I think that you come through in your actions more with that what we call aviat stage of consciousness. Um, why do you do that shift away from the physical? Because um, is it necessary to do that? Why? What is wrong with staying in the physical body? Partly, we would say it it limits you. Uh, it limits you in time and space, it limits you to the tangible. But what we feel is that everything is depending on the mind, and the body of light is run by the mind, mm, even more directly than the body of, the physical body is run by your nervous systems and your muscles and all this. Uh, but when you're working with the, um, just with the mind, you're operating in a much more subtle way. You're operating through atmosphere, through intention, through feeling. The whole thing is much more subtle. And so you're, um, you can say you're operating more on the subtle level than on the gross level. So Sister Denise, as a spiritual person, um, when I want to go from place A to B, I walk there, get onto my bike and cycle there or drive there. Now you engage in activity where you do not use your body at all. Not really, no. Um, put it like this, suppose you have um, 
a program, you have to go to visit a group of people. You want to carry the message of spirituality. You want those people to be well disposed to receiving the message that you want to tell them. So you will go there in your meditation with your body of light quite often in the days leading up to that so that they actually even perceive you, feel you, anticipate you before you're even there. So that when you get there with your body, physically, um, all of the rapport building has already been done. You have a harmony with them because you have done that work in advance with the body of light. Mm. If there's any danger that's um, headed I your way, how does your understanding and knowledge of the body of light protect you from imminent threat? Perhaps one of the things that can happen is when you're really connected with your body of light, um, you can anticipate these things better and then you can um, take evasive action or preventive action. Uh, so that is a good thing. Um, also, if there is danger, um, I think sometimes you can sort of detect it. And danger is because maybe someone doesn't like you, feels antagonistic, feels threatened or whatever. And uh, you can detect it and then you can send atmosphere vibration to that person so that they um, feel much calmer about you and that they don't feel that there's any threat coming for, from you. So you will, you will touch their mind in that way. Mm. Sister Denise, apart from um, all physical danger, um, do you use your body of light to protect yourself in any way? I think that when you're aware of it, when you're operating through it, um, you know, the, the body of light is in a sense more durable than your physical body. It's not a eternal, the soul is eternal. You can create an image through your body of light and that image uh, can be, as it were, kept in the mind space. And that image can actually be accessed for centuries. So wherever people experience visions of some saint or some angel or something like this, this is because that person who they're experiencing in their vision or their dream also uh, has um, worked with their body of light so that it's able to just be there. Um, and then sometimes people will feel it as a protection so, you, you know, you don't need to protect yourself. You're already protected, but other people need to feel protected. And so sometimes your body of light can be conveyed uh, in a general way, uh, and, and then people can feel protected from experiencing that. Sometimes, you know, for most people, it's very difficult to have a direct experience of God. But if they can have an experience from someone who has an experience of God, um, which is less intangible, then it makes it a little bit more accessible. So something like that is also possible. Mm. Okay. Um, the word healing comes to mind. How have you used um, your understanding of the body of light to heal that which is damaged? within the soul. You heal yourself, you heal others, um, or help with their healing. How do you do this? A good thing is to be in such a level of consciousness where you're really connected with your body of light that causes another person in your company to get connected with their own body of light. Oh, it's contagious. Um, it's influential. It's contagious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Um, which means that y you facilitate in another person an additional dimension 
on which to operate as so that they become less limited by their limitations. And that's a good thing to do. Mm. It's like a form of charity. Yeah, but it's non-verbal, isn't it? It's non-verbal, it's intangible, but definitely um, it, it causes people to feel uh, they're not alone, uh, that there is um, protection, that there is company, that there is some kind of force around them. And so maybe that can alleviate any kind of feelings of despair that sometimes people can have. Mm. Sister Denise, there are many listening to you who are in um, da danger and who um, have no way of protecting themselves physically. Um, what are your words to them so that they can protect the spirit and also the physical body that doesn't involve any violence? The reason I'm asking this question is, as I hear you speak, you are emanating a very beautiful energy of uh, softness and silence and um, peace and mellow, mellow, the atmosphere is very mellow. So um, how do you um, uh, help people who, uh, or what is your message rather for somebody who is not feeling anything that you are, but would like to, because they need it as a form of self-protection wherever they may be in the world. When you are only in the physical consciousness, you're quite vulnerable. When you start to be aware of yourself as a soul, of your body of light, you can amplify that. And if somebody is, and there are anecdotes of this happening to people who, who practice this, um, somebody wants to harm you, but at that time you go into that consciousness, they will not be able to see you. They will only be able to see light. And a person who wishes to do harm cannot do anything when they are faced with just light. Sister Denise, um, I'd like you to share with the viewers what you mean practically by um, connecting with your body of light. And I'd like you to take us through a meditation commentary where you show us uh, what it is that you do and how you keep it with you even though you're not um, consciously engaged in such thought. So would you take us through that please? Yeah. The attention has to go deep inside and the mind needs to just pull away from your sense of being in the physical world. Just pull your attention from the material body that you're in and just allow yourself to go on to a different vibration, a different plane of being. And by doing this, you're really in contact with your body of light and you will even feel that there's light all around you. It's a different dimension and you reach it by simply focusing your mind within and just turn your attention to that sense of detachment. There is peace, there is light. You're aware of your inner body, which is truly a body of light and you are not in the limitation of space and time that you're normally in, but you are uh, beyond it, almost as if you are operating in a dream. And when you're in a dream, you're really using your body of light. And in the meditation, it becomes very conscious that you're in your light body 
and you are absorbing light from the Supreme Being and you're able to move easily without limits. You're able to influence the atmosphere. It's as if you can go anywhere. You can even go forward in time to another time in the future and set the atmosphere of your being in that future time. Or in the present time, you can set the atmosphere of your being in another place and just go there and fill the space of that place with the feeling of you in your body of light. And do this silently. And then with just a few thoughts, bring yourself back to the everyday reality of the here and now, this space, this time. You're reconnecting with your physical body. So the soul, the body of light, the physical body are all together. Om Shanti. Uh, it's hard to speak after listening to that. Uh, all I can say is thank you. So, I so very wish that you at home are uh, able to not just hear what was shared uh, this half hour, but also feel the atmosphere in the studio here with us right now. But um, the message that was shared is very deep and powerful, that we as human beings, there's more to you than meets the eye, literally. And so Sister Denise was sharing the importance of understanding and connecting with your body of light and also using it to your advantage for your own spiritual benefit, for your safety and protection, and also to make life easier for you. And also, it's a way of protecting and serving other people, even though you may not be in the same room with them. So I hope you are able to take this message to heart, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, and goodbye.